The Supreme Court nears the end of a historic term in which several important rulings impacting religion are being decided. This week, taxpayer funds for religious schools and the big one that had the country holding its breath, the Dobbs abortion case out of Mississippi. A victory for life at the Supreme Court as justices rule in favor of the 2018 Mississippi law restricting most abortions after 15 weeks in the case known as Dobb versus Jackson Women's Health. In a vote of 6 to 3 authored by Justice Samuel Alito, the high court overturned the right to abortion established nearly 50 years ago. Alito arguing that Roe versus Wade was, quote, egregiously wrong from the start. As we said, the case challenged the landmark abortion case Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion nationwide in 1973, and also Planned Parenthood v. Casey, which set up the framework for viability. Abortion legalization now goes to the states. According to the Catholic News Agency, more than a dozen states have trigger laws, some of which immediately outlaw abortion now that the case has ruled in favor of Mississippi. Those states are highlighted on this map, including Alabama, Kentucky, Louisiana, South Dakota, Idaho, Tennessee, Texas, Arkansas, Mississippi, Missouri, North Dakota, Oklahoma, Utah, and Wyoming. Some states have moved in the other direction, protecting abortion. Joining us to discuss this blockbuster ruling, Mark Rienzi, president of the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty and professor of constitutional law at the Catholic University of America. Mark, thank you so much for joining us on this day. I'm sure you haven't even had time to finish reading the more than 200-page decision, uh, but it's a good day for life um, for all of us. Thank you for being here. Happy to be here. Mississippi Attorney General Lynn Fitch just released this statement, saying in part, now our work to empower women and promote life truly begins. The court has let loose its hold on abortion policymaking and given it back to the people. Mark, this 5-4 decision, what does it really mean? Yeah, um, and in some ways I might even say it's it's a 6-3 or a 5-1-3, um, because Chief Justice Roberts does agree with uh, the majority for much of the, the ruling. So what it means is that the court has decided that there is no secret, unspoken constitutional right to an abortion. What the court says is, look, the Constitution just didn't resolve and didn't create a federal constitutional right to kill unborn children. Um, instead, the court says that issue is left to the states. And so the people can use the democratic process to decide how they want to deal with these very difficult issues instead of having the Constitution dictate uh, the one-size-fits-all answer that there must be a right to do it. And over the past couple of months, we've seen states take this up and start to pass some laws and propose some laws that would respond to today's decision, effectively using the democratic process. But the country has been divided enough on abortion that it never passed a legislative or a congressional right to abortion to enshrine it that way. Is the court then reflecting that by leaving it to the states? Yeah, I think the court is reflecting what is, you know, I think really the only honest reading of the Constitution, which is the Constitution is a short document and it addresses some things, but there's many things it doesn't address. And it plainly doesn't tell us what the answer is to the question of abortion. So what the court says is, look, it was wrong and it was a mistake and it was bad for the law and bad for the country to pretend that the Constitution resolved that. And we're going to fix the mistake we made. And we're going to say the Constitution doesn't do it. And therefore, the Constitution leaves it to the people like it leaves so many other things to the people. And the democratic process, as you say, is how we sort things out. And the truth is, for a couple generations now, um, we haven't had the practice of using the democratic process to sort this out. It's all been sort of you know, stifled and controlled by the Supreme Court's decision without letting people get used to the idea of working out these hard questions in the democratic process. But now people are going to going to get used to that again, and it's a good thing. And there's going to be a lot for us to cover. Mark, I neglected to mention that you and I work together at the Beckett Fund for Religious Liberty. It's important for our viewers to know that. But your career has largely focused on protecting free speech rights of pro-lifers. You talk about this at Catholic University in part of your constitutional law courses. And you want a Supreme Court victory protecting the free speech right of pro-lifers. Why is that freedom so much more important today, now that this issue is at the state level? Yeah, well, you know, the, look, the freedom to talk about, to think about, to have your own religious beliefs about, and to try to convince others about these issues um, has always been important and, and again, is, is really more important today because people today can now go to the ballot box and they can vote for officials and people can vote on laws to regulate abortion and protect the unborn and, and do what they think is right. And so for a long time, we could talk about it all we wanted, 
but the only two places it could get resolved was the sidewalk in front of an abortion clinic or the nine justices at the Supreme Court. Um, and now the court has said, no, the Constitution didn't answer that question. We're going to let the people resolve it through the democratic process. Um, and we don't know exactly how that will turn out. And in some places, they will have laws that are very, very favorable to abortion, and many, many babies will still die. Uh, in some places, they'll have laws that are much more protective of life. I certainly hope um, we see more and more of the ones protecting protecting life. In this country, we really ought to be able to welcome uh, welcome babies into this world and uh, and find ways to support them and support mothers. Um, so hopefully that's the future that we get after this decision. Thank you so much, Mark. And we'll be tracking that future here on EWTN News In Depth. We appreciate you being here. Thank you.